guys, Dave Wilson here again and today I'm going to show you this strange set of tools, the Fretz tube flooring kit. So come with me, let's take a look at it. Follow me. This is the Fretz TFS tube flooring tool for bead spacers. So what does it do? Well if I show you this it makes little fleur beads or spacers for use on bracelets and necklaces. It's actually a little kit of tools consisting of the wooden stand, a metal base or holder, and three mandrels. Each mandrel comes apart and you can see that the ends have a small concave taper which is reflected at both ends. Note there are three mandrels in different sizes. As always, beautiful fret quality with the satin and the mirror polish. Solid steel, precision made. How do we use them? Begin with silver tube. Important, you must use seamless tubing. If there's a soldered seam along it or if the tube is open, then it's not going to work properly. The next consideration is the internal diameter. It needs to go over the tip of the mandrel, but if it's too wide, it will sit too far down and it won't be flared out enough. The tube can be cut to almost any length you want, but you need to ensure that the central rod on the mandrel can slot into the bottom to align everything. Vice versa, if it's too short, then the mandrels will already be touching and so you won't get a good flare. Fretz recommends the number one for tubing with an inside diameter of 3.5 to 4.4 millimeters. Number two, for tubing with an inside diameter of 4.5 to 5.9 millimeters and mandrel number three for tubing with an inside diameter of six to seven millimeters. So between the three mandrels you can use tubing from 3.5 to seven millimeters. Remember this is the internal diameter not the outside. For best results always try to use the beef mandrel you can for the diameter of the tube. This will give you the most flare. The wall thickness and the length of the tubing are variable within reason, so feel free to experiment with different bees. With silver, try to get a kneeled tube. If in any doubt, anneal it first before cutting and flaring it. This is sterling silver seamless tubing with an outside diameter of 6mm, inside diameter of 46 and a 0.7 wall thickness. So the 4.6 millimeter inside diameter is perfect for use with the medium sized mandrel. And I'm going to cut this into 10 millimeter lengths. The tube must be cut perfectly square at the ends. You can buy uh, tube cutting tools for use with a piercing saw or like me you can use a filing jig to file the ends perfectly. Make sure there's no debris and that the ends are clean. Uh, and you can use little burr or a round file just to clean the ends up. Place the tubing over the appropriate mandrel and stand it up right in the holder on a flat, very solid surface. Now I'm using a two pound brass mallet here to avoid any damage to the mandrels. Or a superb option is the Fretz brass face stamping hammers such as the STH 1, 2 and 3. But remember Never use a steel hammer on a steel tool because this can be dangerous. Apply just a couple of light blows, not too hard, and check that the tube is flared. Ideally, you want the edge of the tube to come close to the edge of the mandrel. Avoid it coming past, especially with long beads, as the mandrel will just bury itself into the tube and will eventually just split it. Likewise, be careful with very short beads. You will hear when the two mandrels have come together, so don't hammer beyond that point. Absolute mega top tip. If you're cutting lots of tube, get yourself one of these. A plumber's pipe cutter. You can find these in your local DIY store or buy them online. Um, they are for plumbers for cutting copper tube. But this little tiny one is absolutely perfect for anything from 3mm. It works a bit like a, a can opener. So, mark your tube, put it in, and you just tighten it up, spin it round the tube a couple of times,
tighten it up, spin it round again, tighten it up, and after two or three turns, it will make a nice clean cut. It's perfectly straight, perfectly clean cut, and it's really quick, really easy. Just take your time with it, because if you apply too much pressure, it can crimp the ends a little bit. So take your time, and it's brilliant. So, pipe tube cutter. Find it in your little DIY store. Brilliant. Finally, really great tip. I find whacking things with a hammer to be a little bit hit and miss, quite literally sometimes. So, what I've done is instead of using the brass mallet, I've compressed the mandrels using my bench vise. This gives me a lot of precision and control. I can really control how much I compress them. And the other thing as well is, if you measure the length of the mandrel, put a little marker on, so I'm using a little plastic rule here, I can see exactly when that is gone down and it's completely closed, which you've no way of telling really when you're hitting it with a hammer. So really good way of working very accurately and making it accurate and repeatable. So play around with different lengths, thicknesses and diameters. Try mixing them with soldered jump rings and wire, possibly even making little tiny spinner beads. There are so many possibilities. I hope I've inspired you. So check out pepetools.com for the latest deals on this and other Fretch tools. I've been Dave Wilson. Thanks for watching and I'll see you real soon on the next video. Bye for now.